Good morning. This company's clothing can be seen high up in the mountains of the Himalayas and on Wall Street. It is a company that began in California in the early 1970s by a bunch of climbing dirtbags who were working half of the year molding steel into climbing equipment so they could climb for the rest of the year with the small profit that they made. What it turned out into was something that the founder of the company, Yuan Chouinard, did not expect. One of the largest outdoor clothing brands and a forerunner in environmental consciousness and human rights in the clothing industry. I'm talking about Patagonia. Patagonia began in Ventura, California in a small steel shed where climbers and surfers were creating climbing gear such as pitons and carabiners for themselves and fellow climbers to be safer up in the mountains. Yuvon Choinard, who founded Patagonia in 1957, was a respected climber and helped turn climbing into what it is today. He created revolutionary products such as the steel carabiner and different kinds of protection that could be placed into the rock to keep the climbers safe. And he went on later to create outdoor clothing that was revolutionary in the material used and the warmth and comfortability it provided for fellow outdoor enthusiasts. The first step that Patagonia took towards entering the clothing industry was importing rugby shirts from Scotland to the US, such as this one. The rugby shirts could be used for climbing because of the rigorous materials it was made from, which would protect the climber from the rope and slings that were carried up on the climbs. From there they went on to import raincoats, sleeping bags and gloves from Scotland and Austria. From there on they have only grown and innovated new materials and practices to minimize their environmental footprint and to support fair working conditions. In its early days Patagonia grew primarily in the US by outdoor enthusiasts and surfers and climbers but they did have a customer base around the world because of the growing surfing and climbing communities. They opened their first store in Ventura, California, which is still open and you can go visit it. From there on, Patagonia has expanded around the world with 70 new stores throughout Asia, Europe, and America. Patagonia has slowly in the past 50 years expanded around the world by horizontal foreign direct investment which has been to establish their own stores around the world and by licensing in the way of supplying their clothing to a retailer store. Patagonia has also formed a great presence online with its web shop that ships around the world. Comparing to other brands, Patagonia is very picky to whom they supply their clothing and they want to be able to support independent grassroots stores that are in line with Patagonia's values. Patagonia does not own any of their mills, farms, or factories that supply them with their products and raw materials, and neither have they ever done that. The way Patagonia manufactures its clothing is done by outsourcing its manufacturing. They manufacture their products in 45 different factories in 16 different countries all over the world, such as in Asia, Europe, and America. One of the main reasons Patagonia has outsourced their manufacturing around the world besides it being cheaper than producing it in America, it's because of over half of Patagonia's sales are international, which allows them to send their product straight from, their, straight from the factories to the stores, eliminating emissions from unnecessary transportation. So for Patagonia to work with a factory mill or farm, they have to make sure that the facility has good working standards, everything from well-lit rooms, good pay, fair labor laws and ethical practices. Patagonia has since 2007 reduced the number of factories they work with with 58% from 108 factories to 45 because they have wanted to find factories that practice fair and ethical labor practices. Patagonia is also privately held and they have never been a publicly traded company and it looks like they have no plans of doing that in the future either. Yuvon Chouinard has wanted to keep it privately held so that they do not have to listen to outside investors or shareholders, allowing them to be as politically radical and environmentally conscious as they want. Patagonia has also been politically loud in the past years from suing the Trump administration in 2017 for their decision to remove statutory protection from two national monuments in Utah to helping destroy and tear down dams around the world to save wild fish population. 
Patagonia is a thriving company. In 2015, their revenue was reported 750 million US dollars, which has grown to 1 billion in 2017. Their marketing and business model, which is for people to buy less, has actually helped them to grow bigger. We are in business to save our home planet. That is Patagonia's mission statement. What makes Patagonia different from other clothing brands is its fight against climate change, environmental degradation and injustice around the world. From the start, standing up for our planet and people is something that's been very close to Patagonia and its workers. They have throughout the years tried to minimize their carbon footprint as much as possible by finding alternatives and more sustainable materials, encouraging reuse and fixing of their products. For example, this sweatshirt right here is produced by recycled plastic bottles and plastics. In 2011, Patagonia took out a full page ad in the New York Times which stated do not buy this jacket and then went on to describe what goes into making the jacket and why you should not buy it. It was a bold tactic that actually did not work for its intended reasons because after the ad their sales rose by 30%. A couple of other interesting things that Patagonia have done throughout the year is in 2012 Patagonia began their worn wear campaign where they encourage people to send in their ripped clothing to get them fixed instead of buying a new piece and also being able to get store credit if you return a piece that is not longer in use. And in 2013 Patagonia also launched Tin Shed Ventures which is a capital venture fund that helps to support small, environmentally friendly and sustainable businesses so that other companies can realize that it can be profitable to be sustainable. Patagonia is a really interesting and revolutionary company in the way they do things. Even though they are swimming towards the stream in many areas, they are still able to turn a huge profit and grow every year. Their approach to corporate social responsibility and making sure that in every tier of their manufacturing process everything is done accordingly to ethical rules and laws. How they have chosen to stay privately held so that they can be as true to themselves as possible and how they have tried to cut down on their carbon emission in every way from outsourcing, coming up with new recyclable material and fixing ripped clothing. They have become a big inspiration and example for new businesses and the outdoor clothing industry and it will be interesting to see how the clothing industry will change for the better or for the worst in the future. Thank you.